Hey, good morning, Scram. I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. So I'm continuing some R&D here and uh, did not think I was going to like the uh, BTEC UV Pro. Again, a big shout out to Isaac over at T-Rex Labs and T-Rex Arms for sending it my way. And uh, quick follow-up, if you guys saw my YouTube video on the water test, uh, it actually turns out that this thing is not fully sealed and there are, are no gaskets. If you remove the battery after doing a dunk like I did, you will find a little bit of moisture inside. It did not seem to impact anything. And then also when removing the SMA uh, antenna here, there was also quite a bit of water in there. That concerned me quite a bit. And obviously there was a lot of water in the USB-C housing. So I had the power off when I did the dunk test and uh, let everything out dry really nicely and it's still in working order. So I wanna show you a little prototype I have for my MCOM Tools project. I got a command now called ET MCOM Tools UV Pro and we can hit enter here and I have three options. One is to connect, the other is to pair and unpair. So the first thing we're gonna do is pair the radio, and I try to make this as nerd-free as possible, but you still have to jump into the command line. The good news is that pairing is a one-time operation, and to make it uh, a little bit easier, I decided to have all of the user prompts in yellow so that it's clear on what the user needs to do, and it tells us to turn on the radio, so we'll turn that on. And then we need to go to uh, menu, and then it wants us to go to the pairing and then press OK. So we'll scroll down, hit OK. And now it's flashing. And now we just go ahead and press enter. This is the part that took a little bit of doing. The first thing it's gonna do is scan for uh, the UV Pro. And there's a little configuration file that defines uh, essentially what it needs to look for. And once it finds the MAC address, it does some magic behind the screen scenes and it's already paired. So you can ignore, or ignore all of the uh, the nerd stuff there. And uh, the cool thing is now we can now uh, connect to it. And I have another command here called connect. And again, I wish that this portion of the integration was not as uh, command heavy, but honestly, once you do the first pairing, all you're ever gonna do is use the uh, connect option. And just like before, it's just going to make sure that you have one of the settings turned on under general, which is KISS TNC checked. So I do have that turned on. It's a persistent setting here. So it was under general settings, KISS TNC. And the only option I've enabled there is to enable it. And I left the defaults. So now we'll go ahead and press enter. And it's going to use the information that it found before during the pairing. And it's going to try to kill all of the processes we use for amateur radio to connect to it or to connect to that TNC. Uh, so this is mostly for information purposes. And then it now tells you that we are connected and the port is ready. And I provided some uh, very simple instructions on how to uh, connect to, for example, a packet BBS. I will be doing a little bit of work later to integrate this with uh, Winlink, so it's gonna be nice and easy, but I'm looking forward to testing this out in the field. So we're gonna do uh, packets 1200, which is the name of the, uh, the radio port that MCOM Tools uses for an integration like this. And then I'm gonna put my BBS, TTP BBS, and if this works correctly, we should connect to it pretty quickly. Um, let's see here. Yep, we are connected at uh, 1200 baud. I have a bunch of different services. Uh, just for fun, let's take a look at, I think we did the space weather alerts yesterday. Let's take a look at this fun one here called Wiki. And uh, while I'm not a big fan of the, uh, the internet here, I do have my packet BBS connected to the internet and it will fetch uh, Wikipedia in real time. So we'll go to uh, search. Press two, and again, just over a radio, I could be in the field up to about 100 miles from my location based on our infrastructure out here. And uh, let's see, I wanna search for, let's say, AX25 packet, and we'll hit enter. So now the station at the house is going off, and it gives us a few options on search results. Uh, AX25, that first result looks pretty good, so we'll put the number one, hit enter, 
And this is real time all over the radio between the BTEC UV Pro and my station. And now you can see here we have, uh, we're getting back information uh, kind of slowly one page at a time. So anyways, just a very quick uh, demo here, but the plan is to uh, not have any wires. Uh, I will say in terms of revisiting the, the IP67 rating, uh, you know, I'm never really going to subject it to dunk test. The most I do is get lots of salt, moisture, and sweat that builds up on it, and I think it's going to be fine for that. Um, I also did some charging yesterday with a USB-C using uh, this nice little panel that was sent to me last year by Pale Blue, and I was able to uh, charge things up. Actually, let's go ahead and take a look here at some of the R&D I'm doing wasn't really prepared to show this to you, but uh, yeah, I'm trying to go heavy on the research these days and keeping notes. So yesterday I was at 48% uh, charge and uh, I put the panels out for 30 minutes. It was very early in the morning at 0830 to 0930 and I was able to uh, improve or add 10% capacity back to the battery. Uh, a little bit later that morning, uh, I ran it again and was able to, for an hour, I was able to go to 16%. But what I found was uh, the sun had moved and it was casting shadows. Uh, so I moved it. And then when I was at 74%, uh, after I'd moved it to an area that was going to be full sun for at least an hour, I was able to get 22% back into it. So not too bad with low uh, sun with some shadows and then full sun again. In about two and a half hours, I was able to replenish uh, close to 50% of the battery with the uh, pale blue panels here. Uh, so probably a very different video on that. So guys, uh, next video is going to be uh, me going into the field and talking about why BBS in 2025, why I'm deploying that infrastructure uh, for local comms. So anyways, uh, this is a long video, kind of ranty here, but just wanted to show you uh, the things I'm looking at in terms of reimagining radio, I want stuff to be simple, keep it simple, stupid, and I want to make sure we're still embracing the tools, not toys philosophy. Anyways, guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared.